Mayor de Blasio issued an executive order authorizing the Department of Corrections to require 12-hour shifts for officers just days before the vaccine mandate goes into effect. The union blasted the measure, saying it'll drive the jails into a deeper crisis. Meantime, a delegation of lawmakers says the conditions there are still inhumane. CBS 2's Andrea Klein-Thomas with the latest on where things stand now and how much the chaos is costing taxpayers. There's still a crisis on Rikers Island. We saw it up close today. There's a staffing shortage that disrupts every aspect of operation. City Councilman Mark Levine, U.S. Representative Adriano Espiat, and a delegation of city and state lawmakers recounted continued dirty conditions on Rikers Island, even in renovated areas. Inmates not getting meals in time and correction officers not showing up for work in large numbers. A lot of uh, the folks that work here are calling in sick, and as a result, the services that are uh, supposed to be provided for those detained here are not being provided. On any given day, more than 1,000 officers could be out sick. Hundreds more are on restricted duty, and it comes at a high cost. Through a formal request for information, CBS2 learned overtime for correction officers was $7.3 million in January and steadily increased to $12.5 million by October, totaling nearly $99 million for the first 10 months of the year alone. Taxpayers foot the bill. I am concerned about what this lack and shortage of, of personnel um, has done to the, the morale in the facility. Uh, officers are working two and three shifts, uh, which obviously, you know, it's excruciating. Making it a breeding ground for violence and the reason union leaders say correction officers fear returning. At least 460 have retired or resigned since the beginning of the year. Shifting more staff to the jails, help from the NYPD and a new class of correction officers in training still doesn't come close to replacing them. And lawmakers warn the new COVID variant could make things even worse. This is a congregate setting where people are close together, usually unmasked with low vaccination rates. Those are all the ingredients where we know COVID thrives. Putting both the staff and those incarcerated at an even greater risk, adding to the urgency for a complete overhaul. To complicate things even more, the vaccination mandate for staff on Rikers Island goes into effect on December 1st. Their vaccination rates have greatly lagged behind other city agencies. So by the end of this week, more correction officers could be out of work. From East Elmhurst, Queens, Andrea Klein-Thomas, CBS2 News. And Congressman Espayat also raised concerns about the slowdown in the courts that keeps inmates in Rikers longer as they await trial. He plans to write a letter to the CDC to see if it can offer safety guidance that would allow the courts to process more cases so the jails don't become a breeding ground for COVID.